Welcome to today's IPD workflow presentation. My name is Dan Monahan, and I'm the U.S. Managing Director for Nemechek SIA. For over 15 years, I've been helping firms evaluate and successfully implement AEC technology. With new processes like integrated project delivery, more and more engineering firms are being asked to participate in collaborative model-based workflows. However, migrating to these new processes can be difficult with traditional engineering design technology. In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at how a new breed of 3D structural design software is going beyond analysis and helping firms easily plug into today's BIM workflows. In this presentation, we'll use the DC Riverside project as an example project to illustrate the exchange of BIM models using the IFC file format. IFC, or Industry Foundation class, is supported by all BIM programs and provides a neutral way to exchange BIM model data. In this presentation, we'll focus on the exchanges between the architect and the structural engineer. As is typical today, the teams in this project all use different BIM authoring tools, i.e. the software that they felt worked best for their part of the design process. To help guide and manage the BIM model development and exchanges, this project used the AIA E202 documents and BIM protocol exhibit. The AGC offers a similar BIM protocol with their consensus docs. The benefit of these documents is they help to define who's responsible for each element of the model and to what level of development. They also try to define what the model is supposed to be used for, to what extent users can rely on the model, who will manage the model, and who owns the model. The document introduces the concept of model LODs, or levels of development, for each stage in the design process. These stages somewhat overlap the traditional workflows, but instead of seven or eight with very unique aspects, there's only five which focus on the development and the details of the BIM model and the responsibilities of each of the team members. While the stages appear linear from general to specific, it really promotes an iterative process where team members are involved early in the design and regularly review and exchange model data. For the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to focus on the LOD 200 and LOD 300 stages of model development. This project starts with the architect delivering two IFC BIM model files, an LOD 200 model of the architect's early concept of the architecture, and an LOD 200 model of the architect's early concepts of the building structure. Allowing the structural engineer to reference and reuse the architect's models is a huge improvement over today's traditional workflows. Here, you could see the two BIM models together in SIA Engineer. Well, why two models? Well, having the architectural model as background geometry helps the engineer better understand the architect's intent and reduces the number of RFIs. Having the structural model means that the engineer doesn't have to start from scratch. Instead of having to import 2D CAD drawings and remodel the structure as you would in a traditional engineering analysis program, SIA Engineer lets the engineer easily reuse the structural geometry the architect has already created. In this model, for example, the floor slabs from the architect transfer in as 2D elements and the beam and columns as 1D elements. Now, from the architect's model, I can begin to verify and, where necessary, clean up the architect's information. This concept of being able to clean up an architect's model is another important technology in SIA Engineer that makes the model exchange with the architect useful. As you know, Engineers tend to think of structures differently. They tend to think of volumes and are typically not concerned with modeling the structure as a real coherent structural model that's needed for analysis. So, how do you go from the architect's model to a proper analytical model? With traditional analysis software, this is either impossible, i.e. I have to remodel the building in my A&D software, or the cleanup is very tedious and time consuming. SIA Engineer provides a suite of tools making it easy to convert architectural models into proper engineering models that are ready for analysis. Here's a simple example of what I'm talking about. Here we have a column designed by an architect, but the engineer needs different information. He needs this schematic representation, the plate, the foundation, the column, beams, described as bars and nodes. This is classical for an engineer. So how do you go from this to this? This ability for SIA Engineer to convert architectural objects into structural objects makes it easy for engineers to leverage architects' models into analysis and lets them pass back optimized models for collaboration and documentation. In this example, you can see the architect's model being displayed gray, so you can clearly see how it's being used as background reference geometry. And I'm beginning to take the architect's structural concept and develop my framing plan. So, from the architect's early stage LOD 200 model, 
the engineer would use rules of thumb and maybe some light analysis to return to the architect our early structural concept model, or what we would call the structural LOD 200 model. This model would be returned to the architect for validation before we continue. As is typical, the architect, owner, and contractor in this project evaluated the design and decided to make some changes based on cost, constructability, and aesthetics. Here you could see the architect's more refined LOD 300 model. In this project, the tower roof was simplified into a flat structure and the east wing penthouse was developed into a full floor. So, from the architect's more developed LOD 300 model, we then reworked our structural LOD 200 model to incorporate the changes. The result is a more developed LOD 300 model of the structure that's now ready for loading. Here, you can see the live loads being applied to the floors in SIA Engineer. Next, we set up the model for wind loads, and we would continue to add loads and load combinations as necessary. Then, with the loads defined, we're ready to move on to analysis and design. Here, we're looking at a fundamental mode in the x-axis, and we can visualize the central core deflecting under seismic excitation. The central tower portion of this project required some special attention, as the tower housed the building's mechanical systems and service cores, as well as a six-story open atrium that was an important architectural design element. In this example, you could see the bending moments on the tower atrium steel frame. And we could see these results graphically on the physical structural model. This ability to integrate the physical structural model and the analytical model in SIA Engineer means we can visualize instantly how changes like editing a cross section, adding bracing, or moving a member will affect the shared structural model. This was important in this project as the tolerances for the mechanical systems were pretty tight. And here you can see the shear on the tower core wall. Using these values, we could then optimize the tower core's reinforcement. And because all structures are tied to the ground, it's important to consider the effect design decisions have on the soil structure interface. Here you can see the bearing stresses on the soil, and if needed, we could design piles for the supports, then feed that information back to the architect. Once we're finished with the design, we could then move on to document the project. Here's a framing plan that was automatically generated from the structural model in SIA Engineer. Because we maintain the architect's model in the background, we can give a much more complete representation of the structural system within its actual context. Here you could see the architect's model being displayed as gray in these drawings. And here are some section drawings generated from the model. And of course these drawings are linked to the model, so they'll automatically update as the design changes. And these drawings can be exported to a CAD program as DXF or DWG files, or shared as PDFs. Being able to share and merge the architect and engineering models inside SIA Engineer allows new ways to communicate our design. This is a 3D PDF of the DC Riverside project exported out of SIA Engineer. Using 3D PDF, we can create a 3D presentation that anyone can navigate and examine. Using the navigation tools that are available in the free version of Adobe Acrobat's Reader, the viewer can zoom into the model to take a closer look, change the rendering settings, to look inside and see the architecture and structural models working together, and even fly around and walk through the design to get just the view that they need. Again, this presentation didn't require any special software or extra work. It comes as a side benefit of being able to support both models and using open standards like Adobe's 3D PDF. But the main benefit of this model exchange is how it helps the engineer keep up with the architect's design changes. In this project, the architect's original design called for tall, brace-free glass curtain walls in the atrium lobby. These large, unbraced column lengths required very large and expensive built-up cross-section. After further review of the LOD 300 structural model, the architect decided that the cost of the large built-up columns just weren't worth the aesthetic effect. So, we conferred and jointly decided that we could change them to steel. In this slide, the architect is notating in the architectural BIM model the location of the bracing. And here you can see the updated model in SIA Engineer. We reran the analysis, finalized the structural design, and then sent our changes back to the architect for approval. To help manage these model exchanges, SIA Engineer offers a unique model update feature. The model update command will automatically compare new and existing models and allow engineers to accept or reject the model changes. And it provides an easy way to maintain a revision history of all of the exchanges in a project. So, using these same iterative workflows, the model was further refined until the design was complete. 
here you can see a final rendering of the architecture. Here you can see the models of the structure and the mechanical systems together. And lastly, here are all three together in the finished design. Well, that concludes today's presentation. I hope I was able to illustrate how CA Engineer can help facilitate IPD by improving the model exchange process and help engineers plug analysis into their 3D BIM workflows. If you're an engineering firm looking to migrate to or improve your existing 3D workflows, we can help. For more information on CA Engineer's model exchange capabilities or questions on anything else you saw here today, feel free to email me directly at dmonahan at sia-online.com. That's dmonahan at sia-online.com. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy today's IPD Expo. And please, explore the Nemechek SIA booth to find more detailed information on the benefits that SIA Engineer can offer your firm.